way of Will John. Guys, welcome back to the world's greatest podcast where we have the greatest guests of all time. Today we have Jim Aframo, who is the author of The Champion's Mind, How Great Athletes Think, Train, and Thrive, as well as his new book, The Leader's Mind. Jim, what's up? Welcome back. How you doing? What's up, Will? Great to be with you today and uh, and your great audience. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you uh, definitely, as I explained, you know, before we actually got on. Um, guys were eating up a lot of the stuff that had to do with anxiety, visualization, and as we mentioned, the uh, Navy SEAL breathing, which maybe uh, you can give a, a brief run through, uh, again, for the guys that, that didn't see it, um, were really well received. And uh, it's just a topic that seems to be, you can't, you can't overdo how to fix the mind. Because I think in our society still, as much as I would like to say it's way better than it was 10, 15 years ago, and I think I said that in the last podcast, it is still, for me, completely under, uh, underappreciated. And until it's the number one thing, <laughs> I don't think we uh, are going to be, I don't think I'll be satisfied. So I, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll kick it over to you just to kind of say maybe even what the leader's mind is, is about what else you found. Yeah, well, unfortunately, leadership is in uh, short supply these days. And, uh, oh, and it's more, okay. yeah, well, uh, it's more and more important um, to be a good leader, not only for ourselves, self-leadership is key but uh, in terms of leading others. And I've really seen this in my work with a lot of teams and corporations. Um, The best teams and the best corporations usually have the best leaders. And it doesn't necessarily mean just from the top down. It could be, you know, the players on the team or the workers, you know, in the organization. They really, you know, have the standard of excellence and they hold each other accountable. Um, And they get to know each other beyond just their performance. So, They have these really strong ties. So, um, you know, I think leadership is really, really key right now. We know that most people leave their jobs, not because of the job itself, but because of their boss. Uh, So it's it's usually about the person, not the job. And then also, too, we know that a lot of workers just in corporate America or, you know, in Europe, uh, a lot of, you know, just around the world, a lot of people aren't as engaged as they once were when they're at work. Um, you know, or at practice if they're an athlete. And a lot of that's just due to leadership. There's a disconnection there. And so uh, leadership is, is, is always important, but I think it's, it's more important than ever. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you on a small tangent, but that's still down the leadership, uh, you know, rabbit hole. But in this time that we live in with the pandemic, uh, there's a massive search for leaders, uh, you know, and to, to, uh, I feel as if nobody knows who to, at least that's the sense I got also being back home. I hadn't been home for two years uh, because of the pandemic. And I get the sense that obviously they'll talk about the divided nation and, and all things like that. But on a very simple day-to-day basis, if you ask someone on the street, who do you follow? What do you listen to? What? I don't think you could get a straight answer. Some people will claim this and then, you know, I don't, I don't believe it. And so in, in that sense, uh, it reminds me of something that I heard and I'm not sure where or what podcast, but you kind of have to be, I think the quote was something along the lines of that you have to be the master of your own kingdom or queendom, obviously. Uh, and I, that's probably a theme that, you know, makes it into your books. Yeah, I love that idea of, uh, you know, I used to always talk about, you know, ink yourself or incorporate yourself. Like, you know, think of yourself as a performance company. And so you're always trying to increase the value of that company. So what do I want to accomplish? What's it going to take to get there? Who do I need to surround myself with to add value? You know, how can I add value to others? And so, uh, you know, that's kind of creating this beautiful world for yourself. And, and like you said, you're kind of the king or the queen of that world um, trying to make a positive difference. Mm-hmm. So let's dig into the nitty gritty tactics here right now, because as we said, as a strategy, I would say that everyone listening to this, regardless of who you are, what you're doing, the very first thing that you need to get in check is your mind. You need to be disciplined with your mind. And that just goes for no matter where and and what you do. But that's easier said than done, right? Especially in the world that we live in with the phones, with the distractions, like you said, people in corporate America aren't necessarily even engaged in their job because they don't want to be there probably in the first place. Then the guy is not nice or the girl, the boss is, you know, the boss sucks. So on a more tactical thing, uh, you know, we we have a lot of athletes obviously listening, but our, our, our range goes all the way into the mid forties. What's the game plan? I mean, if you if you could give someone a game plan for how to get structured, what to do, you know, and and to start pushing towards success. Uh, what a great question. I, I think that the first and foremost, it's to ask yourself, 
who do I want to be? You know, what are my values? Most of us think, what do I want? <laughs> you know, what, what's my wish list, so to speak? Um, and that's important too. You need to have clarity, you know, as we were just talking about in terms of, you know, what am I all about? What do I want? But you got to ask yourself, you know, kind of almost create this hierarchy of values. You know, do I want to be a hard worker? Do I want to be, you know, a difference maker? Do I want, you know, do I want to value family? Do I want to be a team player? You know, come up with a list of values that are important to you. And then every day is an opportunity to live those values. Um, and the difference between those and goals, for example, is goals are always way out there in the distance. You know, like, you know, I want to make this salary or win this trophy. Well, that's way out in the future. But if my goal is, uh, you know, or my value is excellence, rather, then it doesn't matter how far away my goals are. I want to be excellent today in this moment. And so I would definitely start there uh, and just realize that, uh, you know, that's almost your anchor, uh, you know, in terms of your constant in terms of this is who I am. This is what I'm all about. And then each day there's going to be these character defining moments that you want to make sure that, yeah, this is, you know, I'm showing who I really am here. Uh, versus kind of just being tossed around just by what's going on in the day or how you happen to be feeling. Absolutely. I mean, uh, that's a huge point. And, you know, I want to emphasize that to anyone who's listening, because like he said, and, and this is a common thing for most guys, they'll say, I want to play for Real Madrid. I want to play with Ronaldo. I'm going to be better. And that's fine. Like we would never, ever, we want guys to be pushing and hungry and, and, and thriving, but wow, how, how far away is, is, is that goal and how vague and hazy is that? But if you can create a person, then you know, and it's kind of funny, and I don't want to call it guilting yourself, but if you decide that you're the type of person that, you know, goes to bed a, a little early so you can wake up to train or to read a book or whatever, when you've, you've got enough of that habit ingrained in yourself, you almost, you know, you kind of shun yourself. You kind of look at yourself like, are you really that guy that ate all the donuts and then decided not to go out? So it seems to be, you know, for sure that, that, that first thing, um, uh, I, I would, I would throw the question to you. Some guys don't know who they want to be. And, and I'll, 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 I'll preface that with not that they don't want to, they don't know who they want to be. They see people that they like, and then they say, I could never be like that. So where do you, where do I start if I'm just the guy who isn't on a soccer team and I got to get my Ryan right? Because like, you know, both of us have said, that's the first thing to do. Where to start if I don't really know? How do I set that? Well, you just put your finger on it. That's a, a great point you just made there is, is first and foremost, you know, in terms of who do I want to be is ask yourself, who do I admire? And, you know, what, what about them do I admire? Now, you know, usually we, you know, we might think about some things related to talent, you know, or natural ability. But a lot of times we'll think about, man, I love their, uh, you know, they just seem really focused or they just seem really confident or they just seem you know, uh, really mentally tough, Not, nothing really knocks them down. Or if they do get knocked down, they get right back up. And so all of those attributes and characteristics and values that that person has that we really admire, there's nothing preventing us from sharing those uh, and, and embodying those principles. And so look at those as role models in terms of how I want to be each day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, we created this thing called the 21-day challenge um, that is essentially every day you train um, and it incorporates obviously a lot of football soccer training but uh, some visualization there's a whole day just on just on that there's obviously a few days on fitness but the whole idea behind it and I don't know you would definitely know more because uh, my question was going to be on scientific backing for uh, let me just tell this anecdote real quick I, I, I listened to a book uh, recently in the car. And it stated that, I'm not sure when this was, 15, 20 years ago, the, um, some students at Princeton University uh, wrote down their goals. Um, and these small uh, Princeton University, I think they were 3% uh, of the school, wrote down their goals. After 10 or 15 years, they had, essentially, they, 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 they weighted it by, by money, but they had made more money than the rest of <laughs> the other people combined. Um, so I, I don't know where you stand on writing things down. Some guys do, some guys don't. Uh, how can that help? And is there any science behind that? Yeah, I, I love the idea of think it and then ink it. So think what you want and then write it down, exactly what you said. And 
you know, people are of different minds and you got to find out what works best for you. But, you know, because some athletes I've worked with uh, that have won national championships or, you know, won, won a World Series or a Super Bowl, uh, they keep their goals, you know, really close to their best. And where other ones are like, man, I'm going to tell everyone because they're going to hold me accountable and I have nowhere to hide if I tell everyone. So you got to find what works best for you. But I love the idea. I, you know, you could think of it as the power of the pen. You know, if I write down what I want, I'm almost manifesting it. I'm almost like kind of putting it in my subconscious that, you know, this is my, you know, I'm going to focus on that like a laser beam. So I, I love goals, you know, and, and, and so what we're talking about is, you know, goals in terms of what I want to accomplish, but then goals in terms of how I want to be. So I would make, you know, maybe even grab an index card and write down on one side, what do I want? These are my goals, write them down and put them in ink, you know, and then on the other side, what are my values? Competitiveness, excellence, you know, teamwork, service, those kind of things. Absolutely. And you touched on something too here, the subconscious. Uh, I read a great book as well. Uh, Joseph Murphy, the power of the subconscious mind, I believe. And that's, uh, you know, a very informative book, uh, for a whole lot of people. And, uh, essentially if you could maybe explain, because I know for some people, it's just great to hear it from different angles. What's the goal here? Because if I'm a soccer player and I go out and kick the ball five times, it's not in my subconscious mind. When the game comes and it's really fast, you don't have it. But how does that relate necessarily to goal setting uh, and uh, who I want to be? Uh, how do I get who I want to be in my subconscious mind for me to then just, okay, you know, when, when I get put in a situation, I am that person who I said I was going to be. Yeah. Mo most of us are always in uh, either, you know, kind of like sort of a safety or a, um, you know, just status quo type of mode where uh, we're just kind of going with the flow and, uh, you know, kind of going through the motions maybe a little bit at practice or in all other types of things that we're doing throughout our day. And I, I do think writing it down, thinking about what we want, visualizing our success and the steps that's, you know, that we're going to take to achieve it. Uh, I think it just becomes more concrete in our head, the more time, you know, the more often we do that. Uh, and then it just becomes, that's just who I am. That's what I'm all about. And uh, so it, it really seeps into our subconscious where, uh, yeah, that is what I do. You know, I'm, I am the kind of guy that gets up early, or I am the kind of guy that goes to bed early. You know, uh, I'm the kind of guy that really finishes strong at practice. I really run through the finish line. And so Part of it is just telling ourselves that's who I am. That's what I'm all about. Reinforcing that identity. Uh, and then subconsciously, I think we just end up taking on that persona. Uh, otherwise, we tend to, uh, you know, again, it's about safety and, and, and comfort zones and those kind of things. So uh, we got to be intentional with it. But, you know, like you're saying, too, it's like practicing or getting your reps in every day. And then when it's time to perform, it's just almost like you just let that talent out um, and and let it flourish. Um, you're more reactive. You're more in the moment. Those kind of things. So one of the big things that's also you know always getting brought up is the fear and anxiety um, that has to be overcome in order to be this this person. So of the people who you have possibly even worked with, uh, what is the thing? <clears throat> What is the thing that kind of separates the people that you've seen and you've worked with who are doing it and the people who say they're going to do it and then don't? If you have any common denominators between any of the people that you've you've seen, uh, is there one thing or two things that stick out? Yeah, I, well, I love the four C's of mental toughness. So, um, you know, the best of the best are confident um, and, you know, uh, they're humble enough to perform, you know, in, in you know, uh, in practice and, and, and learn from others. But when it's time to, to compete, they have this inner confidence that can't be shaken. So confidence is a big key concentration. Uh, they focus on the right thing at the right time and they don't let outside distractions really get in their world, you know, when their performance world, when it's time to go. Uh, and, or if they do get distracted, they return quickly to the task at hand. So that's a big one. Composure is huge, you know, and that's really, I love the saying that uh, cool heads win hot games. And so, you know, when things are, you know, adversity is striking, you're having an off day, you know, when you're behind in a game, whatever the situation is, you know, you take that extra deep breath, you know, you talk sense to yourself 
Uh, and then you, you know, man, this is a B game day maybe, but, uh, but I love it. Let's bring it on. Let's see if I could still win with my B game or just with, you know, all this adversity striking, it's going to be a better story. And then what you're also hitting on too, there is a, a you know, the biggest differentiator is commitment. And so, uh, you know, I'm not going to coast along all day. I'm going to, I'm going to be all in. And so commitment to me is a commitment to excellence, a commitment to personal greatness, and that's like, you know, hey, there's going to be days where I don't feel like doing it, but uh, that feeling doesn't get a vote, <laughs> you know, like uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, you know, I've already made this commitment and it goes back to values. This is who I am. And so this is what's important to me. And this is how I want to be seen by others as well. And so commitment is every day I'm going to find a way to get at least one day better. And it might be in different ways. It might be through my rest and recovery. It might be through my mental training, or it might be you know, really bringing it in practice and just high quality effort, really being present the whole practice. Totally. That is such a huge, huge point. I mean, persistence for everybody uh, is is going to make or break you. Uh, it's very few and far between the people who have made it on their first time. I can't think of anybody <laughs> who's, who's done truly great things and done it on their first time without it being almost pure luck. Uh, but if I remember correctly, last time you were developing an app is that still or you had an app yeah uh, i can't remember it was new at the time i feel like how did that progress yeah well uh one of the things that we're seeing is that you know just because how scattered everyone is how busy everyone is you know it's hard to carve out time necessarily to meet with someone or you know meet with you know professional as much as we want so i've uh, been working on an app but then also you know considering maybe a champion's mind course uh that would be online and so always playing around with little business kind of entrepreneur kind of ideas uh, and um uh, and that's because you know mental training should be sort of like physical training in the sense that um uh, a little bit each day is helpful now obviously with the physical side you're gonna have to do more than a little bit each day but with the mental training you don't necessarily need to do hours and hours a day it could be a few minutes of breathing here or a few minutes of visualization there uh, I love the 21 day challenge that you're talking about. Create these little challenges for yourself to work on different aspects of your mental game. And that really adds up over time. Uh, you know, I love the saying that uh, Rome wasn't built in a day, but they were laying bricks every hour. And so, you know, we just want to keep laying those bricks every day. And eventually it's like, man, I'm, you know, I've gotten to a point where, you know, look, I'm pretty mentally tough. And when you could look in the in the mirror and say that, man, that's the best feeling. That's so true, and it's it, it's exactly like uh, because I know there's a whole lot of young guys listening. It's exactly like investing, uh, and um, you may think that it just doesn't make sense to put five dollars away today, but if you keep doing it, <laughs> and you're only sixteen, you have no idea uh, how how huge that is going to be. Uh, and I, I know that everyone has a hard time kind of connecting with the future you, right? It, he's just an abstract thing that just never comes because you're always in the present and it's just like tomorrow I'll do this or I'll do that or or maybe even you 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 bluff on yourself and tell yourself I'm going to be great in five years five years comes you didn't really you know you didn't really do it and so holding yourself accountable and being persistent are just so incredibly huge yeah it's such a good point uh Nick Saban the famous American football coach um college football coach uh, yeah I mean he always talks about you know, uh, that we're addicted to tomorrow always. So, you know, tomorrow I'll turn it on or tomorrow I'll get after it or, you know, uh, well, why not today? And so get addicted to today. Um, delay that quick gratification that, you know, like, you know, that gets you off track and for the greater good. And so uh, that's really important is, um you know, having that self-control to say, what do I really, really want, you know, in terms of big picture stuff? And let's find a way, I kind of like the language that you're using there. Let's find a way to make tomorrow's guy happy, <laughs> you know, by, by yeah, kicking exactly. butt today instead of tomorrow's guy going, why didn't you start yesterday? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's it. You will never, ever be upset if you start now. You'll never be upset. Your future you will always be happy. It just doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You will always be happy. Um, uh, I'm curious, this is almost even not really a personal question, but I'm, I'm curious what's influenced you to the conclusions that you have. There's a lot of, uh, I guess you can't, maybe you could kind of put the power of subconscious mind for Joseph Murphy. I think he was a doctor, but uh, in this group, but some of the maybe new age 
maybe, I guess you could kind of call that, uh, and I won't just say just the secret because uh, that's not the only uh, thing out there and I don't just want to blanket term that and say that it's no good because I think there's definitely some great nuggets in there. How much has stuff like that, the stuff that we kind of have a hard time explaining as humans in our current modern society for how someone makes an exponential jump and gain. A lot of the things that are preached uh, from some of the new age books and not even just all, maybe self-help is a better, is a, a better way a kind of to put it, but I'm thinking more of the people who have a, a more intuitive, uh, abstract way of thinking that the universe, let's say, is a, a way that would be, is going to help guide you if you visualize, you know, everything. So how much have those things influenced you? Do you find any good works in those or what do you think in in general? Yeah, I think one thing that you're kind of hitting on there is uh, the idea of optimism versus pessimism. And uh, a lot of us tend to have this, well, it's not going to work out or it hasn't worked out. And I love what you said earlier about, hey, no one succeeded wildly on their first attempt at anything. And so um, so I, I think cultivating that sense of optimism that something, you know, the best is ahead or, you know, uh, something better is around the corner uh, keeps you on a positive track. And a lot of people might say, well, how do you know that's going to happen? And, you know, and, and, and I think, well, if, is it possible that could happen? Yeah. Well, let's dance with that possibility. Uh, let's give that a chance to play out. Do you have anything to lose by going all out in a positive way the rest of the year, the rest of the season, the rest of the day versus pessimism, which is kind of this learned helplessness, like I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. Well, hey, that's going to build some mental muscle there, too. You know, like you talked about persistence. What a great word. You know, we need to be patient and persistent to get what we want. And it's just going to make it that much better. But, um, you know, so I, I love the idea of just uh, you know, really finding a way to stay, you know, I, I call it being psychotically optimistic, you know, and uh, some of the best athletes and, and, and coaches I've been fortunate enough to be around, you know, they're, 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 they're critically, you know, honest with themselves, you know, when, when it's time, you know, like, hey, am I doing the right things? Do I need to get back on track again? What can I do better? But, you know, when it's time to perform, it's just like, you know, the whole game or the whole day, they're looking for something good to happen. And, you know, some athletes that I've worked with and other performers that haven't, you know, accomplished what they want, it's almost like they're always waiting on something bad to happen. <laughs> so, uh, so we need, really need to watch that, you know. And so let's say you hit a, you know, you have a bad first half, you know, hey, we got the bad first half out of the way. Uh, you know, let's fall in love with the second half instead of focusing on hating the last half. Totally. Yeah. That's a big thing for, for people. Obviously you don't have to, and obviously it's just around the new year now, obviously it's January 14th or so we're filming this and new year's resolutions are obviously a big thing. And, uh, I mean, everybody's probably sick of either failing in their new year's resolutions or hearing about people that fail or join the gym or whatever, whatever the thing is. And so one of the really interesting things we had, uh, Benjamin Feingold, who is a chess grandmaster on. And the, the reason we wanted to talk to him was just kind of understand how he applies a lot of the skills and things that he's learned at being so good in chess that he can play five, six games in his head and beat people <laughs> to life. And critical self-analysis was the one thing that he said. He said, I, he said, I don't think I've met anyone who can't be good at chess. He said, the people who don't get good are the ones that do a stupid move after the game they don't go and look at what stupid move they were doing and they do it again and they repeat it and they repeat it. And then over time, marginally, they get a little bit better. Whereas the guy who is critical, but not, you know, not beating himself down on how stupid I was to do this move. Or, no, but the guy that it looks, some guys don't even look. Do you look at your own games? Do you look at your own day? Do you look at your own, you know, work? Uh, look at the week. Uh, I would say, you know, as, as I've gotten older, that is probably one of the biggest keys uh, and it, it puts me into a segue for my, my next question, which is a lot of the, the, the top and elite athletes that you probably work with, I don't know what their inner circle is like, um, but have you found that most people have this incredible inner circle of confidants that they can trust, that they can bounce things off of that are you know, pushing them forward? Uh, I know a lot of guys achieve success in adversity. And, and, and feel like the world's against them and that motivates them. So I don't know what you feel about guys. You know, I've definitely had to leave friends that just thought 
what I was doing was ridiculous. And, you know, it definitely doesn't look like that now, but you know, <laughs> in the time they said that. So yeah, not everyone's going to believe in you until, uh, until you make it. <laughs> and so, but right. you know, and then, and then when you make it, they're like, yeah, I, I knew you would make it. I knew it. it. I knew it, bro. Yeah. yeah. And, and when you really needed to hear that is, you know, during those, those rough patches, but yeah, the, the best of the best, uh, have a, uh, have this circle of excellence around them. And, and, and I think we should all have that around us where you almost think of it as this wall around the people that matter most to me. And they're in the circle and everyone else is outside the circle. So everyone else is entitled to their opinions or, you know, whatever they want to think, or even not, you know, totally understanding what you're doing. Whereas the people in your circle understand you, they could support you when you need to be supported, but they could also challenge you when you need to be challenged. And so part of being great at anything is developing the courage to be disliked by people outside your circle. Because, you know, when you think about the best athletes, the best politicians, the best whatever, they all have a hate club. They all have people that hate them. And so you have to get to a point where, you know, now, you know, if there, if, if, I did something that, you know, deserves some flack. Well, then I need to, you know, man up or, you know, or, or, or own up to that. Uh, but if people are just talking, well, let them talk, but they don't, again, they don't get a vote either. They it's in my circle, the people that I care about, you know, so I don't care about opinions from people I don't care about. I care about opinions from people I do care about. That is so important because, um, you know, uh, uh, Nipsey Hussle, the, 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 the great musician, you know, he talked about, uh, you know, do you have a circle or do you have a cage? And so the cage is, you know, like when you're trapped by everyone else's opinions and it's negative and people are pulling you down versus the circle, which is, man, they're proud of you. They support you, but they also challenge you to be your best. Totally. Totally. And, uh, I mean, I, I've definitely created that over the, over the years. It's as a, as a much younger guy, you're not as clear with, you know, who should be around me. Oh, this is interesting. I'll try this. I'll try that. And that's completely understandable to help figure yourself out. But once you know what you want, uh, I, I would be hyper-focused, hyper-focused on getting the people around me that would want to see me have success and I want to see them have success. It's very easy to have people to feed off of, regardless of if they're in, uh, they play soccer, this one plays basketball, whatever. It's very easy. Um, and you know, I've definitely found that as I've met other top athletes, no matter what they've done, I met some handball, uh, I met some basketball guys over here. You click, you click with them because there's some sort of understanding. And uh, the same thing happened when we had a fighter pilot, uh, CW Lemoyne on, you've got to train incredibly hard. You have to be laser focused to do this stuff. So, uh, I want to just quickly bring it back to some of the tactics and things that, you know, people can, can use to, to change their, their lives essentially. What do you what do you think about the idea of programming your subconscious mind? I know this is uh, at night, uh, using that time before bed to kind of visualize you know, whether it's success or how you want to how you think you should feel. You know, uh, instead of going to bed angry uh, and kind of repeating that system over and, and over again. Do you have you seen anything like that, or there, is there a tactic to? something someone should do before they go to bed? Well, there's a lot of great things that you should do uh, and, and can do. And, 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 you know, getting back to kind of learning from how we're performing, because that's the thing is no one's ever delivered their, their perfect game. Uh, uh, we've gotten, you know, a lot of us have gotten pretty close to what we're, what, what we're, you know, potentially able to do, but, but, you know, perfect doesn't really exist. And so we could always learn. And, and the American investor, um, uh, Ray Dalio, he has a great quote. He says, uh, pain plus reflection. So when something doesn't go well, it's painful. It's emotionally painful. So pain plus reflection, thinking about it. Okay, you know, what did I learn that will help me next time? Or, you know, was it just a, uh, you know, a day to forget? You know, whatever. You try to learn whatever you can from it. Make those small corrections, you know, or little adjustments. That equals progress. So pain plus reflection equals progress. So and, you know, at night or once a week, uh, you know, sit down and, OK, what am I doing? Well, what do I, you know, how can I keep that going? What, what do I need to do better? How do I make those changes? And then now I'm a better player. And so you're always thinking of you're always in this growth mindset of always learning, growing, improving. Uh, 
versus most of us, which tends to be, you know, we have this really static all or nothing thinking, which is I'm either good or I'm bad, you know, or, or I either had a good game or a bad game. And, and we don't really learn from it, grow from it. And so, uh, yeah, so we always want to feel like we're always a student of our game. But at, yeah, at night, so reflection could be writing in a journal. And, and just five, 10 minutes is all, you know, is all the mental training you need each day. Uh, breathing techniques. Uh, sometimes just sitting down, just paying attention to our breath and slowing the breath down can be really helpful because we're usually go, go, go. Uh, so that can be really helpful and then help you to kind of transition into sleep, I think is really important. And then I love what you're saying too, visualization, really creating in your mind what you want, but then seeing yourself getting there. You know, what are the steps I, I need to take to get there? And then what obstacles might pop up that I'm going to, you know, go around or go through. Uh, so getting back to New Year's resolutions, a lot of times people will say, what do you think of New Year's resolutions? And I'll say they're great, but, you know, or, and how are you going to sabotage those? <laughs> so uh, right. thinking, yeah, think in advance, what are going to be your obstacles? How might you sabotage yourself? And then how am I going to avoid sabotaging myself so that, you know, when I don't want to go to the gym or I'm having a tough practice and I just want to start going through the motions, what am I going to do in that moment? And that's a character defining moment. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, it definitely touches on just, you know, the, the, what we said about having that actual critical thinking people avoid that. And I understand why, I mean, everybody has done it. You know, you maybe messed up. You don't want to look at it. Let me just forget about this. Maybe it's, maybe it's better, you know? And if you will take the time to, you know, analyze yourself in those moments, you will come out on the other end, your future, you, like we've spoken about, will be super happy about it. And uh, as you, you mentioned earlier that the, the mind, you only need, and you mentioned just five, 10 minutes, which is true because the one thing I found, and, and you can tell me if you, you, you find this to be true, with meditation, well, let me start like this, with weightlifting, it seems that there's an upper limit. I don't think that I'll be able to pick up a building. I don't know. I've never tried, you know, uh, but it seems like there may be some issues there way up there after, you know, I can lift 600 pounds or whatever. With meditation in the mind, it doesn't seem like there's any limit on how, how excellent you can concentrate, how, how great you can be aware and present. And if you work on that five, 10 minutes, it doesn't seem like there's any limit at all. And we're so distracted that it seems like we may be so subpar. I don't know if in the past we were better, but uh, we seem to be so subpar. So that's just something I thought would make sense for everybody to know. You're not that good if you're not working on it, unless you're special, you know? Yeah, well, we all have a negativity bias. We all think, you know, the moment we get up to the moment we go to bed, we're in our head, you know, thinking, talking to ourselves. And most of that is, uh, is negative or unproductive self-talk, um, you know, or thoughts that pop up. And so I, I always like to say, you know, champions talk to themselves. They don't listen to themselves because, you know, if you just kind of leave it to chance, you know, you're just going to have all these random negative thoughts all day. But that's where you got to talk to yourself right here, right now. I got to get locked in or right here, right now. You know, I got to get done what I said I was going to get done. You know, that that's how you got to talk to yourself or, you know, right here, right now. Um, you know, uh, you know, no one's going to be more. Uh, you know, have a better attitude than me right now, because, you know, it seems like, you know, this is a hopeless situation, but I'm going to find a way to get through this. So you're always talking good to yourself. And, and that takes a little practice. But I love, you know, what you're saying, too, is that the body is limited, you know, um, uh, you know, it uh, probably, probably not gonna be able to lift a building, but uh, but our mind is limitless. And, and, and we should fall in love with that idea. It's like, man, you know, if I really tap into the full power of my mind, imagine what is possible. And a lot of times when we see people accomplish big things, we go, well, they're just talented. Or if I had that person's game or, you know, their, their, you know, their talent or whatever, I would be great too. What they don't see is a lot of those people, you know, the, the grunt work that they put in to get there, they just see the glitter. Yeah. And, uh, that's, you know, that goes for anybody, just like we said, <clears throat> If you put that work in, you have no idea where you can get. And I think the, the quote that I love the most is that you don't actually know yourself. You've never met yourself because the level of consciousness that you will have with an amazing amount of concentration and, and peace and composure in your mind is so different than probably who you are right now or, and who you were 
uh, even if you're slowly evolving, because if you don't take this stuff seriously, you know, you really probably, like you said, are leaving it up to chance. Uh, you know, there's, there's, it's possible, you know, I would never say no, but if you want to put the, the odds in your favor, you know, this is more or less where it's, where it's at. Uh, unless is there, is there anything, uh, wild outside of, outside of that, that you've seen any, any, this is a, I mean, it's a wild card question, but I know people use, I think I, I'm, I'm not sure if I asked you last time, people using contraptions. I've seen not EKG, but maybe EEG. I've seen people attach things to their head to try and do stuff. Uh, you running across any elite athletes doing stuff like this and, and is it successful? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I think that trying different things is fun. Um, uh, you know, have an open mind, but not so open that your brains fall out, you know, uh, you know, use common sense. But I, I think trying different apps or, you know, different technology, those kind of things, some, some you know, neuro training, biofeedback, um, you know, uh, just the visualization, the self-talk, working on your body language, writing your goals down like we're talking about. These are all helpful. Um, and so find out what works best for you. Uh, I do like the idea of not being overly attached to too much technology. Um, um, I'll also, you know, throw in, you know, books and, and, and podcasts such as yours, you know, so we're always in this learning growth mindset. Uh, what was it? Bruce Lee would talk about like, um, you don't want to be like stale water uh, or, or still water, you know, where you're just kind of, it just gets stale. You want to be always flowing and growing and moving and, and evolving. And so, um, I think that that keeps us awake um, and aware and uh, sharpens our skills. And so, uh, you know, have an open mind. And, hey, what are you using? What do you is that helpful? What do you like about that? Try new things. Uh, we uh, it, it's really an accelerator for growth. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's if you want to put gasoline on the fire, like we said. And I mean, uh, if by now, after 40 some odd minutes, you guys aren't <laughs> convinced, uh, I don't know if you will be. But uh, I would suggest to everyone to please check it out. Please check out Jim's books. We will link to everything right down below. Uh, Jim, is there anywhere else that you might want to send guys to, we'll, we'll link everything below, but is there anything specific you want them to check out? Well, I'm on Twitter at gold metal mine. That's my, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm usually on there more than, than other social media cha uh, channels, but uh, Instagram, it's uh, Jim Afromo. Uh, but, uh, and then I'm on LinkedIn and whatnot, but um, yeah, I love connecting with people. I love your audience. I, I love what you're doing. You're making the world a better place. Totally. I hope so. I, I, I hope so. Um, you know, guys, we'll definitely, obviously, uh, we'll even take more questions. And I hope you do make that course at some point. We'd love to send guys, you know, your your way because I think, uh, like I like I said earlier, they're they're eating it up and they're looking for this stuff, which is one of the main reasons, you know, we do this. So welcome back anytime. Thank you a ton uh, for, for being here and uh, we'll do it again sometime. Thanks, Will. Anytime. I appreciate right. you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. See ya.